Hi, my name is Lou Gallo, and I'm going to be covering Onshape Bomb for Google Sheets. For those of you that are Onshape users, you'll notice that we have a, an app store. And if you go to appstore.onshape.com, you can search a number of apps, whether they're desktop apps that connect to Onshape or actual apps that run inside of Onshape. And this is actually known as a connected cloud app. So obviously it runs inside of Google Sheets, but allows you to connect to your Onshape assemblies. Now, if you've never been up here, when you click on the Git application for Google Sheets, uh, this add-on, it's going to take you over to the Sheets add-on store and allow you to install this into your Sheets. So obviously you would authenticate with your Google login, um, and then it'll be inside of Sheets for all spreadsheets to use. Now, if you've never used this before, um, this actually does show up under the add-ons menu in Google Sheets. You can hover over it after you do the installation. You should see this within your sheet, and you can say connect to Onshape. Now, sometimes people will come in here and they won't see it. You can go to the manage add-ons, and you can go underneath here and actually click manage and say use in this document. But by default, it, it should do it. I just created the sheet before recording this, and so you can access it by first connecting to Onshape. Now, if you've never done this before, um, you can click on the button to authenticate. If I'm already logged in, you'll notice that in this other tab, I'm already logged in, but it'll let you know that you're connected, and it essentially does a handshake between Google Sheets and Onshape. Now, I'm logged in. This is the assembly I really want to pull a parts list in of, and what you'll notice is that once this connection happens, it'll actually stick you in the first function of generating a, a bill of material. Now, you'll notice there's a number of options which we'll go through here, but this is the Create Bomb option. Now, instead of having to have a real complex browsing structure and basically recreating what we do inside of here as far as the document, or maybe you want to go into the version graph and see, I want to actually pull all the parts in this version or this workspace, instead of getting into this complexity, I just say, go to the thing that you want to pull a bomb of, grab the entire URL, copy it, and when you come back over here, you just paste this in and say get bomb. Now this is going to go down and it's going to call the information. It's going to get all the data about the top level assembly. And then it's going to go through and parse and count every single part that's within this assembly. Now we don't do nested assemblies. This is really just a part list. So if there's sub assemblies in there, I'm just extracting all of the parts out and getting your part count counts. Now everything under name, description, part number, as well as revision and state are all pulled in. This information is accessible when you're inside of a part. You'll notice that each individual piece in here actually has a property. You can see much of this by just going into the version graph and using the properties pull down right here. You can see that many of these things already have values. In most cases, if you haven't ever used this, a lot of your properties are probably empty. Now, another nice part about this is that once you pull in this sheet, Again, it's going to create a tab. You could create another sheet in here, pull in another assembly. You could have a whole bunch of them in here. But here's the important thing that a lot of people want to go after is they want to go in and actually make modifications. So they want to go ahead and rename the parts, or they want to go in and change the description or the part number, or maybe add revisions. What we'll do as an example is I'll go in here and actually say this is Rev A, and I'm going to change the socket head cap screw. Now the way that we push these changes back is we actually click on the switch to update. Again, you can access this also by going into the add-on menu and saying update metadata. But what this does is it kind of illustrates, you'll notice there's a little legend down here that tells you a little bit about the environment. If anything's grayed out, it's gonna be read only, meaning that when you click update, we're not gonna actually read these, these areas of the chart. If you're working with versions, which are immutable or cannot be changed, you'll see a few things change. For example, the name of the part can't change when it's a version, but you can change the state. So there's a few things that you'll notice as you've pulled these things in, um, how they actually change based on whether they're a version or workspace. And we try to illustrate the things here that can actually be changed. Now remember, editing metadata does require some type of access. So you do have to have permissions to do this. Now when I click update metadata, it's gonna go through and it's actually going to see all the things in here and update on shape. It's gonna actually put a little stamp up here telling you when you updated. And what you'll notice is that the socket head cap screw, if we go in and we look at the properties here, we should see that the socket head cap screw, which should be right here, is actually now Rev A, just like we pushed it. 
So this is a nice way to have kind of a bi-directional back and forth between Onshape and Google Sheets. This also now supports linked documents. So if you have documents that are external to the main document that you put in for the, the bill of material, we will pull all that data in. If you have correct write permissions, we'll let you update it. In the instant that you don't have the ability to update, I will show a little, a little preview here where things may have failed and you'll be able to see that as well. Now another little piece I put in here recently was the get preview function. And this is kind of a nice little preview ability to not only get a general view of the assembly that this bill of material is, but you can also pick on any of these parts. For example, if I wanted to click on this impeller here, I could go down here and then say get item preview. In any cell that's selected, I'm going to grab this row and bring in the preview for that part. So you'll notice that you can actually just click through and I'm getting a live preview. So this isn't a stored thumbnail. I'm actually going back to the assembly and saying, hey, give me the updated picture of this. And uh, you'll see the image live as it sits the instant you click the button. So these are, these are a few tools that are in the Onshape bomb tool, and hopefully this will get you started for pulling many bombs out of uh, Onshape.